Hello, my name is Enrique, and I am here because I want a better life. Can you help me? That is what this student said to me within 10 seconds of meeting him. Talk about a captivating introduction. The moment I met Enrique, I was, headed, I was headed out of my office to meet with my supervisor, and I happened to stop at the Educate Tomorrow office. This is an office at Miami-Dade College that works with students that are aging out of foster care, have been adopted, or are homeless. On that particular day, I, I introduced myself to Enrique, and although I did not know the details of his story, I knew that he needed assistance. I knew that he wanted a better life. It was an instant connection. I called my boss and told her that I was not able to meet with her because there was a student that needed me. Enrique needed my support. We spent the next two hours talking about his story and figuring out how I could help him. But during our conversation, I saw Enrique looking around my office and Enrique was a bit nervous. He was a bit concerned. He was also hesitant to share his story. So I told him, Enrique, don't be, don't be fooled by my suit and tie or the degrees that you see in the wall because I too have a story. You see, I, ar I arrived at Miami-Dade College as a shy, sheltered 17-year-old that had no idea what I wanted to do. My family fled from Puerto Rico when I was seven because of violence and financial instability. When I started going to school in the state, I was bullied and didn't have any friends. For some, school was a place to socialize and learn. For me, it was a place where I was bullied and I became anxious, lonely, and insecure. Despite doing well academically, I dropped out when I was 15 years old. My mother, who was my protector and my closest friend, convinced me to go to night school and earn my high school diploma. My mother was my rock. Whatever she said became my dogma. About six months later, while she, my brother, and I were watching a telenovela or a Spanish soap opera, I heard a traumatizing scream that 23 years later, I still struggle to take away from my mind. There was my mother on the floor suffering a massive heart attack, grasping for air like a fish out of water. My mother died in my arms when I was 16. She was 43. Her death didn't come with instructions on how to navigate the world, but in that moment, I knew I had to change. I knew that if I wanted to live the life that I meant to live, I had to make some, some immediate options. Those that the world stole from me within seconds. So I decided to do the best I could. I was going to night school from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. in order to do the best I could to earn that high school diploma. After that, I would help my dad at the local supermarket where he used to have a second job cleaning as a custodian. I still remember sweeping the floor as tears would roll down my face trying to cope with not having my mother and dealing with stress that I did not know how to handle. I went from being a high school dropout to now having a PhD in conflict resolution. Thank you. After sharing my story with Enrique, he started opening up. See, I was not ashamed of telling the student that was in front of me, I know what struggle feels like. I was sitting exactly where you're sitting many years ago. Little by little, Enrique started opening up and he shared about his story of addiction, neglect, and most acutely, homelessness. He did not have a stable home at the time and he needed a place to live in order for him to be able to succeed academically. Fortunately, we were able to place him at Camilla's house, a local shelter with a youth program for students attending college. Enrique not only received a place to live, but he also received psychological help and three meals a day free of charge. Fast forward a few months, I received an email from my boss asking me to, to moderate a panel here in Washington, D.C. in the Department of Education. 
They also told me that they needed a student to be a part of that panel. I immediately thought of Enrique as the perfect fit for this life-changing opportunity. Unfortunately, when I approached Enrique, he said, Dean, absolutely not. Not only will I make a fool out of me, but worse, I will make a fool out of you. I then turned to him and said, it's okay if you decide not to do this, but it will not be because you can't. How about if we work together to ensure that you are ready for this amazing opportunity? Initially, he was reluctant. How many people that had made him promises had let him down? In my suit and tie, in my big office, I became that principal, that caseworker, that family member, and that cop that would say that they would be there for him, and were not that would simply turn their back and walk away. I knew that I had to build trust with him. When I first met him rolled around, he looked at me and said, Dean, cannot believe that you're actually doing this, that I matter so much that you will be here with me, helping me. I am happy to report that Enrique did a phenomenal job in that panel. That experience truly became a life changer for him. It boosted his self-confidence tremendously, and it gave him the encouragement he needed to be successful. He no longer was ashamed of his story. He embraced it with pride and rigor. Enrique went on to become the Student Government Association President at Miami-Dade College Wolfson Campus and representing over 32,000 students. In a in addition, he traveled abroad to Indonesia in a scholarship free of charge, was elected an American Dream Scholar by Achieving the Dream, and graduated Miami-Dade College with honors and with a 3.6 grade point average. <laughs> now Enrique uses his story to share and tell others it's okay if you're going through something. Every challenge becomes an opportunity because you are worthy. He is now an amazing storyteller. For many of us in this room, our role is to break down the systematic barriers that keep students like me, like Enrique, and even like some of you from being successful. And that work is good. That work must happen. But if I can leave you with one thought today, is that many times, in addition to the tangible resources, what our students really need, it's someone like us in this room in power to tell them you are worthy. You matter. And that you show up when you say you will. Show up because students need you, they believe in you, and they rely on you. They need to hear that being vulnerable and saying you need help is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of strength. People always say, Jaime, why do you get up in front of people and say that you're a dropout and share your story? And I say, because that story makes me who I am. My accent speaks about my struggles and that yes, it has been difficult, but I am here. And if collectively, we can learn to surrender our shame and embrace our own story, then I have no doubt we will inspire the next generation of students not only to succeed, but to become inspiring, motivational storytellers themselves, like many of you in this room. Thank you. Thank you.